Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Um, hi, I'm Dr. Edmund Hernandez. You guys are watching Decade TV. And today we're going to have Harold Brown. Harold Brown is a technologist, an innovator, and he has run publicly traded companies in, uh, in this area. So watch next, his new venture, Gaida. Hi, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, and you're watching Tech Ed TV. And today we get a great guest, a friend, an entrepreneur, CEO, Harold Brown. How are you, Harold? Good, Edwin. Thank you very much. We, we <laughs> high elbow now, I guess. That's uh, the way we do it here. And uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where, do you, where does your career begin? Uh, my career began in Germany, or uh, began in Germany, in Cologne, actually. Um, I started as a public school teacher. So wow. in Germany, you have this. Uh, uh, you know, double kind of an education system as an apprentice system. Okay. You go to school for a while and then you go the next couple of weeks uh, uh, to uh, learn about the job. And, you know, they, uh, I, you know, they gave me a good, uh, you know, uh, path to complete my uh, first studies. And then, um, you know, I worked for Deutsche Telekom and then they, uh, gave me actually some scholarships and then I did another study in um, the University of Aachen and um, after that I wanted to make sh very clear that I wanted to be in a global environment, okay. uh, work in a global environment. For that I took off, you know, and um, started my career in Siemens in Munich as a as a software developer. Oh, so you began in Siemens as a software developer. That's so you're. That's why you love computers and software technology. That's a yeah. That's a, that's how I met Harold actually, like here in the incubator. And uh, tell us a little bit more about that journey from uh, going from Deutsche Telekom to Nokia. Uh, yeah, that was a long. That was a long way, of course. First of all, I did twelve years in Munich. Oh wow! And uh, software development. After that. Uh, um, the um, organization thought that I have more potential also to run businesses. So, and then for Siemens, I went to Sources Asia, run uh, Sources Asia uh -huh. for Siemens. Uh, and then after that, they um, asked me to uh, run the US as a CEO. Um, oh. That was here in Boca Raton. So, the uh, Siemens uh, communication mm -hmm. for the US. Um, it was actually headquartered here in Boca Raton. Okay. Uh, we had many thousand people here. In the end of the day, I uh, did actually run the organization for enterprises, carrier, and mobility. And then at one point in time, in 2007, um, there was this kind of um, uh, notion of Siemens communication uh, will merge actually with Nokia. Oh. And okay. then we built Nokia Siemens and. Uh, so I um, decided to work one year for them. And then the day when the year was over, I left. And then the next morning, I was announced to be a CEO of a public traded company, <laughs> Aviat Network, which was at that point in time, Harris Tradex. Um, uh, so we put both companies together, Harris in Florida, uh -huh. in Melbourne, and Stratex from Silicon Valley. We put them together as Harris Stratex and then uh, brought them to uh, uh, Nasdaq exchange and then I run as a public traded uh, CEO um, Harris Stratex and then later on I rebranded it to Aviat Network. Oh, Aviat Network, yeah, everybody knows Aviat Network, that's a very famous brand and name. And, uh, and, and tell us a little bit uh, about like your, your current situation, your, your, your entrepreneur, I, I, I think that that's one of your uh, core values. And now you have a new venture in artificial intelligence. Uh, so what's uh, what's going on with Guidant? Yeah. So I mean, when you were a public traded uh, CEO, then of course you have a lot of uh, uh, let's say friends. They, you know a lot of companies uh, you work with, and of course during you know all the years you have really an, a focus area of telecommunication. In my case, it was telecommunication. And a lot of companies ask you also to be either an advisor to them or in the board of them. So okay. that happened in Big Ben Network, public traded company, we sold it later on. Or that happened in CLA Direct, where I'm a board member and also very active. And you know, and you work for different companies in the board and advisors. And then you see there is an industry developing in the background, which is uh, based on uh, everything is connected, kind of an IoT company, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, a car these days is also a device, a mobile device. Okay. So, and since that was coming up, 
um, and that is a huge device actually connected to the mobile network, uh, I decided to take a look at how can we actually connect cars okay. and how can we use artificial intelligence to make uh, autonomous vehicles more safe. That's wow. the reason. So that's why a, that's a, that's why we a, build guidant. Yeah. Well, you you have a Tesla, obviously. You 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 drive a Tesla, and you you understand as a consumer, I guess, what's what's facing, what's coming up next, and then you have the combination of your background. So with the current technology, and that leads me to the next thing, which is basically uh, the the innovation side of the story, which is the patents and the technology. Yes. You you acquire or you have some patents in Guidant? Yes. So we have at the moment five patents. We're developing right now another one, and um, this this field is pretty wide open, right? So whenever you have a team of people together and think about uh, autonomous vehicles mm -hmm. and developing software in that space and make it more safe, then you see also that you have possibilities to acquire patents from universities. Oh, free universities. That's what we did on some patents, okay. but we wrote also patents ourselves in terms of uh, making, uh, you know, emergency, emergency handoffs or putting artificial intelligence layers into uh, autonomous vehicles. So there we wrote patents, so we have I think two patents we wrote ourselves, three okay. patents we, we did acquire. Okay. And no, I think I think we, we wrote actually three patents. So so we had at the moment five and we are we have one patent in development right now. Yeah. And by the way, this is the first time in my life that I experience you write a patent and nine months later it is already granted. Yeah, so because you have the fast track now with yeah. the with the USPTO and then it's like uh, so it comes to the next thing. It's like okay, since it's a business that is uh, is it based on London? What's the situation with London headquarters? When oh you yeah, 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 yeah. So our main backer, our main uh, you know company who funded us and okay. who uh, helped us you know um, establishing ourselves is Tech Capital. Okay. Tech Capital invest uh, a lot. Um, in um, acquiring patents from universities mm -hmm. and uh, and build from that also companies okay. and they are publicly traded in London. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, okay. so um, they're in London Exchange, I guess. In the London Exchange, they are actually helping us um, a lot uh, right now. We're using also their um, their shared services like okay. the lawyers and the marketing. Oh, okay, group and okay, so okay. So but Tech Capital is ba um, you know based in Miami and um, based in London. And they helped us actually get the company off the ground. So you're you're uh, you're funded, then, but you 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 have a, a, a. What are the main areas of the company that you're like trying to 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 target? What are like a, a RMCC? What is that? Um, and RMCC is the Remote Monitoring and Control Center. Okay. And um, we have um, we def first of all guide and develop software for autonomous vehicles using artificial intelligence, right? Mm -hmm. And to, the, the whole goal is to make this safer and um, and and also make sure that we have a faster path to level four and level five autonomy. Okay. At the moment, with a Tesla, with their self-driving capabilities, is it level three? three right? Level three. Yeah. This would be level three. Level five is you would not have even a steering wheel. <laughs> in the car, right? You just sit and it takes you wherever. Yeah, exactly. So that would be level five. Right. And uh, we're trying to get uh, to level four and level five much faster, and uh, using this software and of course uh, the autonomous vehicle industry. But this is a very important point because um, there is. One school of thought saying we're developing software for the autonomous vehicle industry or with them. Okay. Right? On the other side, there is another possibility to actually provide software for the operators okay. to using our autonomous vehicles. Okay. And that seems to be right now the more um, the, the faster path because the operators have special requirements to the AV companies. I get it. And therefore, we're working more at the moment with operators together and influencing the autonomous vehicle industry to their vertical integration to put actually software in their vehicles that it can be also remote monitored and remote controlled from an, uh, um, a control center. So you have basically, you're, you're in the path of creating a software defined vehicle yeah. in a way with artificial intelligence that can still be remotely controlled by 
either the AI or by humans, like uh, in case yes. something happens. So there is a legal requirement. Oh, legal requirement. There's a legal requirement in the US in several states, not all of the states right now, mm -hmm. but we know exactly which states, uh, and Florida is one state, right. that requires when an autonomous vehicle hit a road, a okay. public road, okay. there's a, a legal requirement to have some sort of intervention to that car mm. from a human. Oh. So now that human can be in the car. Right, or, or it can be human remote. can be remote. We have, of course, uh, chosen the path that that human should be remote because, you know, otherwise it doesn't make sense from, a, from an economic point of view. And every operator tells us we want to get rid of the driver. Right? Okay. So okay. because it's the biggest cost element of yeah, yeah, this yeah, whole yeah, thing. Yeah. They want it to be using the data, they don't want it to be driving. <laughs> yeah, they want to use the data, they want to know everything what is in the environment, but then you put that in a remote control center. So therefore we developed this RMCC, have um, a, a person in that remote monitoring control center, Right. let's say for 100 cars, 150 mm -hmm. cars, mm -hmm. or you know, it, 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 um, we are developing right now uh, this business case, and this person can actually control or monitor and control up to 100, 150 cars. Oh, wow, okay. So that means in, the, in one uh, scenario is, is there a mishap from a vehicle and on the screen you see where the vehicle is. Right. And the person in a remote monitoring control center, RMCC, can, over, can take over control of the vehicle, get it out of mishap, get it okay. back on the road, okay. stop it, bring it somewhere else and yield also um, control back to that vehicle. And that's a requirement in Florida law, which I think is were based on Florida, which brings me to the next question. You you won an award in Florida, start off award. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that is that that is true as well. Um, yes, to that remote monitoring control center, the person who sits there, of course, is that person who can take over control. But you know, you can also choose to have the person in the car. Okay. But okay, a lot okay. of people will not do that because yeah, yeah, yeah. No, in, in ten years, nobody is going to drive. Exactly. Right. In ten at years, the moment it is, exactly. Yeah. At the moment, it is just there. You choose, and it is your choice. But it has to be a human intervention. Gotcha. Right? Gotcha. So, with that concept, by the way, that is one business case. Right. There are more than this business cases. So we have four or five business cases we look at. One of the newer business cases is uh, uh, smart cities. What we did is we started, um, we, we participate in a competition of the FAU, um, they call it FAU launch competition with more than 200 startup companies. Wow, okay. And we won, you know, we won. We're number one. We won, we won that wow, thing, yeah. uh, which comes with a, with a, with a grant and uh, with some money and also with a lot of other perks. Nice. Like we can, we, we can um, use uh, um, a lot of, uh, let's say perks, very good program from the FAU. Okay, okay. And we are participating right now into that. So you have the, the RMCC, you won an award with a startup, uh, a Florida Tante University startup award, over 200 startups, and now you are going into the go-to-market strategy, is that right? Yes, so at the moment we are looking for our um, uh, second uh, top up, I would say, of the initial seed round. Mm -hmm. The initial seed round was uh, um, uh, done, $300,000. 300000 okay. We did. Um, now we are looking for $2 million okay. uh, as an, our top up of the seed round. We wanted to create that first monitoring and control center in Florida. Okay. Uh, just before uh, we, you and I met today, I had a discussion with a person in Boca in a very interesting uh, facility uh, to build our first remote monitoring oh. and control center. Wow. They're very excited about well. having us in there. Yeah. So uh, that's the that actually is the next uh, big thing. We are developing software right now. We are developing the streaming activity, the connectivity, and then we wanted to build that monitoring and control center. This year, operational in the first quarter of 2021. 2021. And then after that, we have different use cases which we wanted to roll out. Not only in Florida. Okay. And then we wanted to roll out in a the other and Anywhere, states. worldwide, whatever. And worldwide, yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. Our patents are also allowing us in some other countries this in, in, in the world. So this is interesting because you, 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 you come from a background where you build teams big teams to success mm -hmm. and you have built I will say a stellar team right now with the board directors tell yeah. us about your team yes yeah, so um, I started um, with the board of directors uh, so we got together with um, some of I would call them industry captains right so there uh, there is Johan Denishan 
uh, very well known in the automotive industry at the mm -hmm. moment. He's the CEO of our Volkswagen Group. Okay. And um, he was also with General Motors before. Okay. He was the president in Japan of Infinity, and you know a mm -hmm. lot of it, everybody knows him in the automotive industry. Then we have Dan Grossman, uh, which was known as the CEO of uh, of Zipcars. Mm -hmm. right, which oh, Zipcar, yeah, yeah, wow. That's uh, uh, which he sold to Ivis. Mm -hmm. And um, so he's a, he's a serial entrepreneur. He's also working with us. Then we have um, uh, Dr. Gross in, um, in Miami from Tech Capital and, uh, and myself. So and we try, we're trying to start up the company. And with that, I hired Dr. Castaneda from the FAU, Michael Chuang. I know both gentlemen. From Dialogic, where okay. I was in the board, and we sold the company in December last year to Enghaus in Canada, and these two uh, developers were available. So we um, oh, you integrate the developers from directly from into our company. You roll them into a new venture, basically. We roll them directly into a new venture, which was perfect, and we know the people, and you know we have um, Dan Grossman from the board that takes care of uh, at the moment uh, as our chief revenue officer. And uh, we have Anna. Anna is looking at uh, is an analyst looking also at marketing activities. Uh -huh. Eric uh, looks at marketing activity. Conrad uh, is our CFO. So we're building up the team, and we're looking, of course, for more AI specialists and also software developers right now. Well, guys, if you want to work for the next artificial intelligence corporation in South yeah. Florida, we are listening. It's an name. Send an email to Guidant, right? Guidant.co, yes. is that the .co. website? Yeah. yeah, we have it down there actually for you. And we have been showing some slides that I think is, are interesting. And one slide that really caught my eye is the, the use case uh, number one. It's a vehicle request remote monitoring. Yeah. And uh, so so you, you have this this RPTC is built. Is a, what was RPTC? Yeah, that, that is the, we, we rebranded it to RMCC. Oh, okay. That okay. is the remote monitoring and control center. Got it. Got this it. is different layers. You see in that slide. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm showing actually this slide. Oh, you're showing this slide. Yeah. So we're showing the slide of how it works. Uh, I mean, we're, we're here in the studio showing that you have a control center, you have an on demand layer, a cybersecurity layer, the data analytics, yeah. the AI, and the data processing. Correct. And that, of course, is very important. When you show that slide in the background, you know, I can quickly walk through that. You see a person on top of it. The person is the driver, the remote driver. Right? Yeah, I see it over here. And he has that. a screen in front of him. But in the future, I see that it is just a screen in the room, right? So you see, right. you, you, can, you can actually dial into the car, so to say, and see what's going on. Very important is there that we have the software layers there. Um, in cybersecurity, so okay. that, that the access is uh, secured, okay. that we have artificial intelligence algorithm to use all the available data of the vehicle from the environment mm -hmm. and wherever we can get the data from. Think about it like this. The remote driver controls 200 cars, let's say, 200 AVs in, right. in a certain area. And all of them are green. There's a green dot on that vehicle uh, in a certain area. Suddenly, some dots turn yellow. Right. What happened? So because of artificial intelligence, these dots turn yellow. Right. And the driver, the remote driver, will directly dial into that and check what's going on there. Oh. Maybe the weather is changing. Maybe there are uh, accidents in the area. Maybe the, the vehicle is not working right. uh, uh, or has some issues. So then this remote driver will directly look into that. Uh -huh. Right. The other green areas, they don't. They, they, they're they, fine. They are fine. Right. Know? So that is how we actually can scale that model. Okay. Think about it. In five, six years, you have ten thousand vehicles running around, and you have then, of course, hundred drivers. Or right. More, right. Right. And they take care about a certain area. Yeah. So, um, uh, and th that's what we wanted to do. And the focus right now is on when you see that slide on the right hand side, you see robots. Right. You see also uh, people movers, right, and you see delivery kind of drones. We call them land-based or terrestrial drones, not the flying drones, the land-based drones, like the Neuros and the Navias and the Starships and so on. Um, they are already allowed on roads in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and we need to control them. At the moment, for example, you just saw in Los Angeles, there is a there's a, a starship running in front of you, and there is a person behind it. Yeah, it's like a remote control <laughs> car, right? But, 
but in the future there will be there no will people be no. There'll be, and what do you think like so the connectivity right so you have this remote uh, management control center so you see this very widely linked with 5g well, what's how yeah. do you see that yes and i think that is a very important question to address at the moment it's 4g and 5g right uh, latency is a big issue of course right 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 uh, latency translate into yards right mm -hmm. when you have more latency uh, the, the vehicles i already hit the, the we, pedestrian <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and we don't want to have that happen so that means latency is a very important point and of course reliability and we are developing right now um, algorithms um, based on um, 5G or even uh, 4G. On, on 4G or with a different network. Oh, okay. Maybe we're using a private LTE network. Oh, okay. Maybe okay. we're using multi-edge computing. Okay. Right. So we have we have things in development right now which can show us actually that we reduce the latency, that we are closer to the edge, closer to the roads or whatever to make sure that we have a reliable, safe, low latency connectivity. Got big it. problem right now, big problem. We have at the moment, um, we're working <coughs> with, an, uh, with a potential customer, which is the largest deployment of autonomous vehicles in, this, in the nation. Really, okay. And we know exactly what the issues are, okay. and where they need help, and where other things uh, where, where, where we could help, yeah? So there are lots of challenges. On the other side, they are there to be solved. And well, we yeah, are part of, of the course. solution. Yeah. Well, I think Guiden is like a super great company. I think you're looking for capital as well, so you can reach out to you or to your yes. partners. Yes. And I think that's, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's it for all today, guys. I think uh, it's been amazing. That's pretty cool. I love the technology. I think Guiden is gonna come to revolutionize what the software defined vehicles are and how they operate and how they help us and assist us in the, in the future world. Maybe our kids and our grandkids will never know how to drive. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, but uh, it sounds like that's the way to go. It's going to be safer. It's going to be nicer. We're going to enjoy our rides when we go from, from, from home to, to work or from home to, to Miami. I think it's going to be more exciting, more time for in our hands to enjoy and appreciate life. And thanks again for joining uh, our show, uh, yeah. Harold. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll catch you on in more shows again. Very good. Thank you very much. Lots to talk about. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thanks again, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you.